the world of rally driving, where the toughest terrains push drivers to their limits, there is a passionate enthusiast who has garnered valuable experience and knowledge. Meet Sparky, an individual deeply connected to the world of automobiles with a remarkable understanding of rally driving, restoration and customization. While Sparky may not claim the title of the most seasoned rally driver, his years of experience have provided him with invaluable insights, lessons and a wealth of practical knowledge. He has encountered various challenges on the road and has learned from them, owning his skills and understanding of what it takes to excel in the demanding world of rally racing. Beyond his driving prowess, Sparky has developed a keen eye for customization, offering guidance and suggestions to fellow enthusiasts seeking to enhance their vehicles. His understanding of the intricacies of rally car modification enables him to provide practical tips and tricks to optimize performance and tailor vehicles to meet specific needs. Safety is of paramount importance to Sparky, and he recognizes the risks inherent in rally driving. Through his experiences, he has gained a deep appreciation for the importance of safety measures and can offer valuable guidance on how to navigate the challenging terrains, while prioritizing the well-being of both the driver and the machine. When it comes to restoration, Sparky's connection to his family's heritage in vintage car restoration fuels his passion for bringing classic vehicles back to, his, back to life. He understands the art of preserving the original charm and character while incorporating modern elements to enhance performance and reliability. His expertise in customization and restoration makes him a trusted source of guidance for those embarking on similar projects. Join Sparky as he shares his wealth of knowledge, offering suggestions, tips and tricks to aspiring rally drivers and automotive enthusiasts. Discover the joys and challenges of rally racing, learn about the art of customization and explore the importance of safety in the pursuit of automotive excellence. Embark on a captivating journey with Sparky as he shares his insights, learnings and the joy that comes from embracing the world of rally driving restoration and customization. So Sparky Indrajit Sarkar, how are you? <laughs> Finally? Yes, after a long time. After a very, very long time, indeed we are meeting also. Yes. And thank you so much for giving me so much of time. And it's actually good to see at the level, you know, at which you're working on cars. I just thought that you are only and only focusing on rally cars. Honestly, the questions if you went through, yeah. they are only focused on yeah, rally mainly. cars. Restoration ka toh ko pata hi nahi tha. it yeah. was a surprise for yeah. me also. But anyhow, let's start. And uh, first question obviously is, why cars? I think it's the most important question. What brought you into cars? So uh, for three, I'm the third generation. Uh, we've had okay. workshop in our house. So my okay. grandfather started the workshop in Calcutta first. Okay. Then my father ran it. And then I parallelly started mine in Delhi. Okay. So now I run my father's workshop as well as mine. Okay. So I have two workshops, one in Calcutta and one mm. here in Noida. Okay. okay. So, cars has been a part of life ever since I was born. Okay. And the car you see behind you is one of the cars that, you know, we've had always in our house. Okay. And, uh, How old is this car? This is a 1956 Studebaker President. Okay. Okay. And uh, it's got a V8 engine in it, factory fitted. Okay. Factory fitted air conditioned. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's this is one of my... Same engine which it came with. Yeah, it's all original. Everything is original okay. with this car. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's probably one of the first classic cars I've been out in as a child uh, also. So I have uh, very special and fond memories with this particular car. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm just finishing the restoration of this. I think maybe another two months I should be having this car on the road with all uh, the pending jobs that are left in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's is what is with cars. But still, I think... Uh, Kuch to aisa hua hoga back in the days when you were probably a kid that just made you think ki yaar, you know, this is the direction I'm going to take. So, it, uh, the workshop in Calcutta is with our house. So, okay. niche workshop hai, upar hum log rehte te. 
so we were i was always surrounded with cars all the time okay and then with my with the passion of my father also in yeah. cars and then he used to rally back in the day okay so that is from where it all started bas wo fir ek keeda aapka bas shuru ho gaya chalta raha and since when have you engaged into uh, how did it start for you it started with rallying or it started with the workshop or what was the so start i uh, used to initially go for some holidays to calcutta okay and uh, used to tinker around my in my father's workshop okay but then much later i started uh, once i was in college i got an opportunity to work on a rally nissan patrol and okay. uh, that is that had come from australia and okay. then uh, that was i had helped them prepare it for the desert storm in 2014 Okay. and then in 2015 we got another nissan patrol from bombay which we prepared for the desert storm okay and that is where i started my own uh, passion for building cars and preparing cars for rallying and uh, i mean uh, tapping a little bit into your educational background do you have any do you have an engineering background no i don't i studied management from sambasas and it's only because of your experience and, and your passion. upbringing and passion That's that you it. have been able yeah, to get that into been this into cars yeah this question how do you connect with cars as in if i am to understand what is your connection with cars how do cars make you feel in general no it is uh, my stimulus all the time that uh, is with cars and then uh, driving different cars driving them fast driving them all over that is what i get my satisfaction and peace in life with that gives you the rush yes why what was it that made you move in the direction of rallying and i believe you have done a couple of rallies yeah. probably a little more than a couple of rallies yeah, why rallying what made you choose rallying so initially it was first the sound of cars and then <laughs> the sheer speed that in uh, over long distances you could drive cars consistently at a pace and that is what i always love doing is driving fast for a longer period of time okay so rallying was the only cross country rallying was what i really love doing even today if given an opportunity i'll still do it so uh, give me uh, can you give me a couple of examples of what a cross country rally is so cross country rallying is uh, a format of rallying where you are covering long distances okay so over uh, say different states and cities and towns okay so a typical cross country rally stage would look like 50 kilometers 60 kilometers maybe 100 kilometers or that is okay. of competitive driving and you might have multiple of those stages over many days okay Okay. so that is uh, cross country rallying and you also have stage rallying okay. which is again smaller uh, area to be covered okay. say 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers but in controlled conditions okay. okay okay so it's not say on a race track where you're going round and round but you're covering distance over a particular area okay so that is more of what is rallying and now you tell me about which which are the rallies that you have participated in because from what i can understand there are two three different categories one I mean, to put it in layman terms, one is time speed distance format, and one is the extreme format right. where going flat out. So, right. which ones have you participated in? So, I've part, I've won the Agra Rally once in a Swift with my friend Arpit Mangal. Okay. okay. And overall, we came uh, first in the cars and overall third amongst SUVs. And which category was this? Extreme. No, this is TSD. TSD. Okay. Right. Okay. And apart from that, I have participated in Red Di Amalia in 2015. Okay. And Desert Storm in 2017. and okay. uh, india bahar in 2018 these are extreme okay. but ek baat batao time speed distance ka jo format hota hai from what i can understand is there are some patches wherein you have to go fast right some patches where you have to go really slow right you have speed so, charts for different uh, zones exactly so doesn't it get boring i mean it's a funny question but during those slow taxi times doesn't it get boring for you no uh, see it is boring but it also has its own challenges like what? so for, for example they'll give you uh, say 45 kilometers an hour average speed uh-huh. where you can't probably even drive at 20 kilometers an hour uh-huh. in normal conditions so okay so uh-huh. some and calculations is also the challenge with it mm-hmm. so to calculate and take out the average and the game is in seconds there right it's, it's milliseconds and seconds where people are fighting right. it's right. very right. very competitive right. 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 and on the other hand extreme is where you just mentioned that where uh, a car is probably meant to be driven at say 20 km an hour you have you end up driving at 45 50 60 yeah even more speeds in extreme what do you, what have you driven in rallies what kind of cars have you driven in rallies so i have participated in the nissan patrol in the desert storm and the india bar okay with a ls1 v8 in it and red di malia we were in a uh, maruti suzuki grand vitara 2.4 
Dude, personal question, but driving an LS1 in a rally, isn't that a, a bloody heavy engine to be driven in a rally? It's, it is, but then... In you, a patrol. Yeah, but then the advantage of the power and torque in sand, there is no loss in transmission of power in that really. You don't right. feel the lag. Mm-hmm. Whereas the other cars have smaller engines, mm-hmm. there is much more load mm-hmm. on those cars. Mm-hmm. Tell me one thing, I mean, I have noticed a lot of these uh, very, very crazy rally drivers, you know, just counting so much on two vehicles. If I particularly talk about Raid the Himalaya, Grand Vitara and Gypsy, what is it about these two vehicles that is make that has made these vehicles so dependable over a huge period of time? So, I'll, I'll break it up into two parts. Huh. First is the Gypsy. So, the Gypsy came into rallying in 1988, right? right. Started from the 1000cc engines, then mm. evolved to the... 1.3 carburetor, mm-hmm. then 1.3 MPFI, mm-hmm. then people started fitting the 1.6 MPFI, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. lots of people have fitted the turbo engine, uh, turbos to these engines. The 1.6 was the Baleno engine. engine. Okay, okay. And most people are now also, whoever are the more serious rallies or who have money have moved over from the Gypsy to the Grand Vitara. Okay. The reason for that is, one is, see it is a monocoque uh-huh. and the only 4x4 that can take the beating of rallying. Unlike uh, the other transmissions that are available with the other 4x4 or all-wheel drive cars like mm-hmm. the Duster or the XUV. So, it's it's far more reliable in that sense. Okay. There was also a period when, you know, people had stopped using the Grand Vitara and gone back to the Gypsies. But I can say that I'm probably the only person in India today who runs the maximum number of Grand Vitaras. Okay. I run about 13 of them in India. For different okay. rallies. Sir. Okay, okay. Are there is there any kind of customizations you made to those cars in terms of performance? Lots I'm, of things. Lots we've of things done, right? we've done remap the ECU. Okay. We've gone bigger pistons. We've got uh, custom gear ratios. Okay. We have exhaust intake. So yeah, and apart from that, suspension of course plays a very major role in okay. all this. Okay. So Rigers is what we are using on these cars. And Rigers, I believe, it costs an arm and a leg. <laughs> Maybe a kidney as well. <laughs> So, uh, tell me a little bit about the most memorable moments in rallying for you. So, I think the most memorable moment would be in Desert Storm 2017, okay. which was my first cross-country rally in sand, okay. driving the petrol. And there was this stage, marathon stage of 300 kilometers. <clears throat> and okay. in that, uh, no sorry, it was 200 kilometers. Okay. So, in that, uh, what happened is, in the last 40 kilometers, we had three cars left to overtake. We had overtaken and we started 10th on the road. Okay. Uh, and then the, we got stuck there for, I think, more than three hours okay. uh, at one dune. And we had no water left in the car, nothing. Okay. And it, it was a life-changing experience, I can say. It's sitting in, oh in the sand in 45 degrees and uh, just waiting to come out. And then luckily my partner then managed to get hold of a tractor and he towed us out and then we oh still managed to complete the rally at a what about your service team so during uh, uh, when you are in the stage the service team is not allowed to come in okay so this okay. is inside the competitive okay. stage when this oh, is right, right 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 service team is there af- once you come out of the competitive stage okay what exactly is desert storm and what is the total distance of a desert storm and thirdly how many stages are there so it depends uh, they the average they give you between 10 and 13 stages okay but now the distances have been reduced. Back in the day, you know, there was a time when they would start from Delhi and finish the rally in Gujarat okay. through Rajasthan. And then when I participated, we only did Rajasthan. Okay. So the rally started in Noida. Okay. We got flagged off in Noida. Then there was a free run till uh, Hanumangar. Then okay. from Hanumangar, we went to a place called Sadashair. From uh-huh. there, we went to Bikaner. Bikaner okay. to Jaisalmer. From Jaisalmer to Jodhpur. And the rally finished in Jodhpur. Okay. The total distance was how much? So, I think including transport and competitive, it was close to about 2,500 or 3,000 kilometers. And what month Over was this five happening days. in? This was in March. Chalo, March mein bhi thoda weather thoda bahut theek hota hai, but just for perspective guys, 5 days, 7 days. 7 days and 2,500 kilometers and each day is including a lot of intense <coughs> driving and when I say intense driving, I mean intense driving. Whether March ka mahina ho, whether April ka mahina ho, desert storm ke dauraan din ke time mein bahut garmi ho jati hai. Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, yeah. it gets damp. No, hot. no, you're not wrong at all. Uh, the temperature was about 40 degrees then. Uh, 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 and 
because of the big engine we were running and the car we were running the cabin temperature was somewhere near 50 55 degrees oh my god and we have to wear the helmet, helmet. and balaclava fire suit yes luckily that year fire suits we had a, a waiver from the federation so we okay. were lucky we didn't have to wear it then my what are some of the essential skills and techniques that an aspiring or many of these aspiring rally drivers should focus on when they are getting into rally see uh, there are two or three things which are very uh, important in this the key factor is first is fitness mm -hmm. you have to be very fit and extremely disciplined with your uh, lifestyle when you decide on going on rallying mm -hmm. because it is very physically demanding okay that is one second is uh, you have to be very committed to it. You may in the first maybe 5 rallies, 10 rallies not even finish your rally hmm. because of uh, you, you understanding the machine or you are learning how to drive a particular vehicle hmm. or knowing your car well. Hmm. Uh, the other thing is yes, a lot of vitamin money is required. You but have to vitamin do have M. vitamin M. Yes, you have to have a good support of money because without that there is no point in even starting off because hmm. consistent flow of money will make sure that you are able to see this passion through. Mm -hmm. And last but not the least, you have to find a good, reliable person who you trust. One is your navigator and your tuner as well. Okay. So you all have to be in sync. Right. And right. on the same page. If you are not on the same page, there is no point. You know, hmm. you will there will only be unhappiness at the end of it. But tell me one thing. I mean, the world of rallying. I mean, in other countries, I have seen like the WRC and all at the rallying at that level. It is quite rewarding. Yeah. But what is the scene in terms of rewards in uh, the rallying world in India? So, uh, there is no reward as such. People are doing it okay. just because for their passion. Okay. Maybe 50,000 or 1 lakh you will get. Are you serious? After you finish one rally, if you are lucky. So, if I am to understand, as an, for, from an example, uh, if you win the Raid the Himalaya, for example, what is the reward that you are looking at? 1 lakh of rupees. Just 1 lakh of rupees yeah. after finishing the entire yeah. rally. And that probably kind, covers your fuel costs for the whole rally. And what kind of expenditure goes behind the preps for uh, one raid the Himalaya, which includes vehicle and everything? See, raid the Himalaya doesn't happen anymore, unfortunately, after right. Maruti is pulled out. But right. say a 3 4 day rally, any rally, say a desert storm or Rally of Himalayas or Chamba Rally or any of them. It depends first on what vehicle you are running mm -hmm. and what kind of what condition your car is in after the previous rally. Let's or consider, if it's a fresh build. Let's consider a gypsy, for example. Fine. So you can take an average of say between one and one and a half lakhs to just prepare the car. Just to prepare the car. Yes. Then there is the cost of tires. Okay. Then there is a cost of service. Okay. Then entry fee, fuel. Okay. Then the cost for recce. So, right. you are looking at about four, 3 to 4 lakhs per rally. Easily. And what you get is a lakh of rupees. So, can you tell me a little bit about the vehicle preparation and setup for different kinds of terrain? So, if you talk about the gypsy, only of, uh, of the gypsy, huh. one is what tyres you are going to use firstly. Okay. Right. So, you use a tyre which is more hard for rocky and stony terrains. Okay. And the okay. mountains. Okay. Right. Desert, you will use all-terrain tyres. For sand, okay. okay, those would be better okay. and softer tires, okay, right? Okay. Because the you know you need more grip and traction there, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that will be better there. And right. you need something that will glide over sand and not dig. So right. if you have harder tires, they'll dig, right, 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 right. So right. Right. you're wasting right. more time in digging rather than correct floating over sand and going, right, right. That right. is a then mm. suspension. What you choose? Mm. So mountain rallies again, you need stiffer suspension for tighter cornering. Mm. Okay, yes. And for sand, you'll need slightly softer setup, okay? Because you you need more articulation, and also okay. you're carrying far more speed in the sand than in in the hills. Okay, okay. So these are the basic differences. Right, 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 right. And also then depends on what again. In, if you're driving a gypsy, you have engine options. What engine you want to run? Hmm. 1600 hmm. gives you more power, but in terms of reliability, slightly less. Okay. 1300 engine is more reliable but less power. So I'd okay. run a 1300 engine in the desert. Versus the 1600 and 1600 in the mountains. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, why do you think the 1.6 is less reliable compared to 1.3? So, it, it is not less reliable, but for the particular application we are looking at. Because there are ha far higher temperatures in the desert. 
okay. than in mountains. Okay. So when there is higher temperature, the viscosity of oil is there. Right. Plus, it's a it's a long stroke engine. Okay. So more oil flow needs to be there. Viscosity needs to be maintained, and over okay. longer stages, okay. we are unable to have right. that kind of same level of viscosity. But can't you get a better quality engine oil in that case? We've tried all that, but still okay. it doesn't take the amount of beating because you're driving in four low uh -huh. for, for a longer period of time. So engine is redlining to more than uh, mm -hmm. normal, mm -hmm. right? In, and in the hills, since you're going up and down in different terrains, there is not so much load on the engine. Okay, okay. And uh, of course, desert being desert, there is a lot of load. Load and heat and Right, 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 right. So that what is about, why. What about the cooling mechanism of the vehicle? Is there a different cooling mechanism on uh, in case of desert rally? Of course, we we do definitely go with bigger radiator, uh, electric fan. Okay. These things are upgraded on the Gypsy. Okay. But say now, if you were to come to the Grand Vitara, huh. so in that we are, we don't change any of the setup with the engine or the cooling system because it's a far superior vehicle developed in in the 2000s and more far reliable for this. So that's why. The choice for that is for most people is the Grand Vitara nowadays. Okay. Okay. And also, you know, you with the Rigers, the amount of stability you get is far superior, and uh, you co you can carry much more speed and more competitive in and that. I think those the cars. fact, I mean, I think the fact that the Grand Vitara has all independent suspension, yeah. all four, also. that also I think it should make yeah. a difference. The rear is a six link uh, suspension. Six link, multi link suspension. Yeah. Right. 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 And uh, do you also uh, do you think that I mean, how would you differ between a naturally aspirated engine and a turbocharged engine? A turbocharged engine in terms of performance and reliability over, say, for example, a desert storm. See, I don't think anybody till date has been able to complete a rally with a turbocharged engine in the mountains or in desert storm. But uh, okay. because surely, because again of the amount of load and the high, uh, the amount of revving you have to keep keep uh -huh. keeping the car and the power band. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. since these are all retrofitted, mm -hmm. there is a lot of expense and R&D that goes into it. I'm sure. And nobody I'm sure. really, so you will fail a couple of times before you do succeed mm -hmm. eventually, but then nobody sees the point in spending that amount of money to ultimately, it. Huh, ultimately, you're right. Ultimately, it's not a drag race. It's not a quarter mile. It's an endurance it's race. It's an endurance rally. Whatever you're doing to the vehicle has to last. Last. So first to yeah. finish a rally, you have to... Uh, to win a rally, you have to first finish. Finish a rally. Yeah. Yeah. I think rally drivers as, uh, you know, probably personally also, I would have this message across to all the aspiring rally drivers that focus pehle, jeetne pe na rakke, pehle focus here rakha jai ki rally aapne khatam karni hai. You should be able to finish the rally. Correct me if I'm saying Absolutely anything correct. Wrong, but you need to be able to finish the rally for which, uh, you know, there are points for vehicle condition also after you finish the rally. If you finish rally finish karke first or second, but your car is in a battered condition. Say, for example, you have finished the rally with a few broken parts. I think uske bhi points karte? No, uh, well, you get, uh, if you if your lights and things are not working, okay. you have okay. financial penalty for that. But nothing else. Okay, really. nothing else. Nothing else. Okay.